How about the duality between rational and irrational? You think these are two separate things? Take the most rational person in the world and I'll show you someone who's more irrational than they are actually rational. Most rational people, their rationality has been co completely co-opted by their ego, which is completely co-opted by their emotional system and their needs. So the people who proclaim that they're the most rational, they are actually the most irrational and utterly driven by their egoic biases and emotional needs. Which is precisely why they're so triggered by irrationality. See, what a rational person has done is he's created a shadow out of the irrational because he doesn't know how to handle it or how to deal with it. So he's actually fragmented himself. He himself is disconnected from his body and his emotions. He's living in like the left hemisphere of his mind, his brain. And, um, and that's his whole attitude towards the world is, is completely severed in this way. So then he has to create this shadow. And then anytime he sees irrational activity out there in the world, whether it's religion or it's women or femininity or uh, children or whatever, he gets upset by it because he can't control it and manipulate it the way that his ego wants. And you call that rational? That's the height of irrationality. How about the duality between rational and intuitive? Which are you? Are you rational or are you intuitive? Can you be both? How is rationality actually informed by intuition? And how is intuition actually safeguarded um, and made more concrete through rationality? It's very interesting that the best logicians are highly intuitive people. The best mathematicians are highly intuitive. Isn't that interesting? Most of our genius mathematicians, when they're solving some unsolvable mathematical logical proof, the way they do it is intuitively. They intuit the answer long before they're able to formally prove it. Quite amazing. Good example of that is Kurt Gödel. He's very, very rational on the one hand, yet his rationality is completely grounded in intuition on the other hand. How about the duality between skepticism and faith? These are sometimes pitted against each other as opposites, but are they really? Check out my episode, True versus False Skepticism, where I rant against this. I rant against false skepticism, and I talk about how most skeptics these days, they're not true skeptics at all. They're hypocrites because they don't question their own skepticism. And so they're skeptical about everything except for their skepticism. Therefore, in effect, they have faith in skepticism, which is, of course, <laughs> very ironic, very hypocritical, uh, very misguided. That's exactly right. Skepticism is a very counterintuitive thing. Because if you were truly skeptical, you'd also be skeptical of your skepticism. And where would that leave you? That would leave you groundless. But most skeptics these days, people who proclaim themselves as skeptics, they're not actually groundless. They're dogmatists. But if you actually read the outlines of, uh, of Pyrrhonism, where skepticism came from, from the, uh, from the ancient Greek Pyrrho and from Sexus Empiricus, uh, one of his acolytes, if you if you actually read the original Greek skeptic works, the whole point of skepticism was to not be dogmatic. And yet today, people have turned skepticism into dogma of its own, into a dogma of its own, which is uh, terribly tragic and highly deluded. But good luck convincing one of these skeptics that he's wrong. Because <laughs> he has such absolute faith in his skepticism. I mean, it's a joke. It literally is a joke. Arguing against these rationalists, like Sam Harris types, uh, these skeptics, these atheists, it's it's just like, it's a farce is what it is. It's a, it's, it deserves to be like a comedy. You can make a comedy movie out of it. Because it's so stupid. It's so myopic. 
is so non-integral. It, it lacks perspective, so lacks perspective. It's so far from truth. But uh, I'm getting on a rant here. Uh, moving on. How about the duality between fact and interpretation or empirical data versus interpretation? Sometimes this is framed as facts don't care about your feelings, which is the most idiotic thing that a human being has ever said. Because all of your logic and all of your citing of facts is completely dictated by your feelings. Completely. You think you can separate a fact from interpretation of the fact? You haven't investigated this topic at all, if you think that. The whole can of worms that is epistemology is this problem of our inability to distinguish between what is a fact and what is an interpretation. And what are our reasons versus our feelings? In fact, those people who adamantly state that facts are superior to feelings and that facts can be separated from interpretation in a sort of simplistic notion of science where it's like, well, the data doesn't, as Sam Harris says, I think he says, uh, the data, the data cannot lie. The math cannot lie. <laughs> that's, that's about as, as stupid as saying that statistics cannot lie. You cannot make this separation at all. But what I was saying is that um, those people who adamantly insist that it's possible to separate facts from feelings and facts from interpretation, they themselves are doing that from a position of emotional attachment and feeling. They're attached to that. <laughs> so it's not factual, it's completely emotional which is why they're so adamant about it and they get so emotional about it. They get angry and upset about it. Especially if you point this out to them. They'll start to do all sorts of mental gymnastics and they'll start to call you all sorts of names and demonize you and so forth. Of course, because it's all ego. Ego doesn't give a shit about facts or truth. Ego cares about its agenda and all of your feelings in your entire emotional system is your egoic agenda. That's all it is. Feelings are just a way for your ego to get what it wants. That's all it is. Facts don't matter at all. You don't give a fuck about facts. In fact, you don't even know what a fact is. What is a fact? You don't have a single fact. All you have are interpretations. Even the concept of a fact is already an interpretation. <laughs> See, this is the whole problem of science. Science is under this uh, simple-minded illusion that it can separate experimental data from the interpretation of that data when actually it can't do that. It doesn't know how to do that. 